something drove me to go in the exact opposite direction from, from a career of healing to a career, had I but known, of killing. He came to grips, I guess, in the 70s with the fact that this wasn't his book after all. It was the book of all the guys in his INR, Intelligence and Reconnaissance Platoon, in the Italian campaign of World War II. So he set about to find those guys so that they could tell their parts of the story. And so he has uh, 90 hours of interviews uh, with these guys. He traveled around the country. He loaded up his car with a bottle of bourbon and a tape recorder and found the, uh, as many platoon mates as he could. And he's got 20 some interviews with these guys and they talk to him as they'd never talked to anybody else. And so he transcribed all those hours of interviews and he patched together a book that's a sequential narrative of the Italian campaign starting in Sicily and ending with the liberation of Dachau concentration camp. And it's told in the voices of, you know, Joe's own diary at the time interspersed with the actual um, men talking. On the website, we're going to have um, podcasts of chapters, which is just that. It's Joe talking, reading his own words, his own diary, and his own words, and the men speaking their own words. So, so that as the book is edited, we'll go back to those tapes, and those voices will be inserted. I'm reading these two or three chapters. I'll be reading it. And then so-and-so, where I quote him, will, his voice will actually come over will come on and then go off and I'll continue on, which I don't think anybody's ever done before. The, inf the infantry soldiers at the bottom of the pile, those are the ones who've been the, or we have been the ones who've been the unknowns. And we've been the unknowns partly because we were unknown. And we came, we fought, we died, and that was it. And partly because we didn't want to be known. We didn't want to talk about the war. We didn't want to relive it. We didn't go back to it. We didn't want to go back to that hell. So we no more t wanted to talk about it than our families and our, 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 our wives and so on wanted to hear about it. Our families back at home and friends back at home uh, didn't really want to hear about the war. I think it was just too traumatic for them. They wanted us to just say, it's behind you, move on, don't worry about it, don't think about it, and this is what's sort of the attitude, everybody's attitude. But unless we who have been through these wars can bring ourselves to talk about them, unless we conclude that we're going to be doing this generation after generation after generation, and this is what we've been doing. World War I didn't talk about World War I to World War II. World War II didn't talk about it to, to Korea. The Korean guys didn't talk about it to Vietnam. Vietnam didn't talk to anybody about it. We're going through the same thing in the Middle East now. And these poor guys, these poor traumatized bastards are coming back now from the Middle East. Uh, terrible trauma. Terrible wounds. Terrible psychological trauma. Absolutely horrible. It's an absolute nightmare. But unless somehow or other we can trans transmit this somehow or other, unless we can communicate this, those of us who have been through it can communicate what, it's, what, it, what it was we went through, we will... We will continue to go to war. Each new generation will think it's a great, great thing to go off to. It'll happen to each new generation, and we'll end up by effectively, uh, well, we'll end up. We've got the bombs. We've got the we've got the weaponry out to self to self extinguish, self destroy.